why it's so important what you look at. You, des- you develop a desire for what you behold. And if you're looking at the harvest, you develop a desire for the harvest. One of the reasons why this and your generation is so attacked with imagery is you develop a desire for what you look at. And God, throughout the Old Testament, spoke to his prophets through imagery. And he revealed to them what he was going to do through imagery. And God is trying to give this generation insight about the Spirit through imagery. And if you can behold God's imagery, you will develop a desire for God's agenda. But if you behold a desire, or if you behold what Satan shows at you, or what the world shows at you, or what the kingdom of darkness shows at you, you will develop a desire for sin, for the flesh, and for darkness. It's important what you look at, and it's important what triggers you in your vision. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 13 that when Abraham spoke to Lot and he told him to choose the land that he wanted out of the land that God had promised to Abraham, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 13, 10, And Lot lifted up his eyes, and he started beholding the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And here we see that Lot developed a lust for what he looked at. Lust just means excessive desire, strong desire. We sometimes limit our understanding of lust to sexual things in our world, but Lust is about desire, and you develop a lust for what you look at. So many people get so hung up on what's going to happen with their Netflix show because they have a lust for their show and can't stop therefore looking at it. It's a cycle that feeds itself. And so if you can behold souls with the love of God, you will develop a desire for reaching them in the love of God. And so if you keep on reading, in fact, the Bible says shortly after that, after talking about Lot lifting up his eyes, that the Bible says that the Lord lifted up Abram's eyes. The Lord spoke to Abram to lift it, lift up his head and to look in direction of the Lord. So the question is, who's triggering your desire to behold? Who's triggering your eyesight? Who's triggering your vision? Is it the Word of God? Is it the Spirit of God? Or is it Instagram? Is it TikTok? Is it Netflix? Is it Snapchat? Is it Facebook? Is it your favorite sports team? What is it that's triggering your vision? And so, What you behold, what you look at, you develop a desire for. I wanted to speak on, uh, the Lord gave me some things about releasing a burden. A burden is just a, a load. That's what the word burden translates to when you read it in the Hebrew and the Greek. It's a load. It's something that you pick up. But it's hard to pick up something when your hands are full. Ever try to pick up the groceries and fix, try to put as many bags as you can and you just can't lift up anymore? And uh, I've had a few times where my grocery bags broke on me and this is really unfortunate. But you try to fit more than you can handle. And it's like that with the Spirit of God. If your hands are too full of fleshly, worldly things, it's going to be very difficult to carry God's burden for souls in your life. In fact, you can actually become frustrated when God's trying to make you fruitful because you're carrying too much. 
I remember one time I was frustrated at not seeing the results that I believed God wanted to give to our campus when I was in college. And the Lord spoke to me and said, well, you're caring more than I asked you to. And you're frustrated with your lack of fruitfulness because you're distracted with carrying things I never called you to carry. And that could be in the form of friendships, relationships. Did you ask God about what classes to take this semester? Did you ask the Lord how many credit hours you should take this semester? Did you ask the Lord how many hours you would work at your job while going to school this semester? Sometimes we can carry more than what God wants us to carry, and it limits our ability to be effective with the burden that he wants to give us. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, you know the verse, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And here we are, looking unto Jesus. There it is again. What you are looking at you will develop a lust for. See, we have to reposition this word lust because, honestly, much of our understanding about lust has been perverted. In fact, Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, talks about the flesh lusting against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. You can actually expand that, the understanding of that verse and read it this way. The flesh lusts or has excessive desires that are against the spirit, and the spirit has excessive desires against the flesh. And so many times we give so much room and credit, or could I say permission, to the desires of the flesh working against the spirit when we don't realize that the spirit has strong desires that are against the flesh. And so the question is, which desires are we letting channel through our lives? Which excessive desires are we letting channel in our lifestyles, in our routines, in our responsibilities? The excessive desires of the spirit I want to be acquainted with. I want to be resident in my life. But carrying a burden requires some strength. It requires some skill, in fact. I mean, going back to the grocery bags, you got one grocery, I mean, you want to see how many grocery bags you could put on your pinky, right, before your pinky falls apart. How many grocery bags you could wrap around your arm. How many grocery, how, how about putting that can of, uh, in our home, it's uh, seltzer water. But fitting a seltzer water under, while you're already fitting like four heavy bags of milk, and then putting a watermelon underneath your arm plus another four or five bags, and then walking up the stairs. It takes some skill to carry a load, but you don't carry this load alone. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, I'm sorry, not Matthew chapter 6, Matthew 11. Come unto me, all ye that, are, that labor and are heavy laden, 11.28, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. There is a skill that we have to learn regarding carrying burdens of the Lord. There's burdens of the world and there's burdens of the Lord. And the thing about burdens of the world is that they creep up on us. I mean, Paul had to tell, maybe Paul, but the writer of Hebrews had to write to these believers saying, 
we've got to lay aside not some of the weight, but every weight. And sometimes that takes a lot of self-examination about what baggage am I carrying that's not the will of God for me to carry. You know God won't give you grace for the things he didn't tell you to carry. And one of the worst things that could ever happen in our lives is think that we're successful with carrying a burden that God never called us to carry. One of the things that would be the greatest tragedy for us is to be successful at the wrong thing, the wrong ministry, the wrong calling, the wrong responsibilities. Carrying the wrong burden that God never called us to carry. And God has positioned you with your high school, your school, your campus to carry a burden for souls that no apostolic may be there with you to carry. And you cannot get caught up with what's happening on social media, what's happening with my friend groups, what's happening in this extracurricular activity, what's happening in this other student club, that you don't carry a burden for souls that SGA won't help you carry, another burden for souls that the math club won't carry, another burden for souls that the other Spanish club won't carry, the club and the calling that God is calling you to start is the one that is going to help you carry a love for souls that other clubs will not expose you to. I'm not against being in other clubs. I was in the math club in my senior year of high school. It helped me have relationships with other students and expose them to the church and the youth group and the lifestyle that we have in Christ. And it worked. But that was, the, that was not the only thing that I was involved in. I was intentional by the grace of God to exercise the burden. It's important that we must examine ourselves as to what we're carrying. and Be honest with God. That's probably one of the greatest commodities that we can have when we come into the presence of God is honesty. Honesty. God, see, if, if we're too busy for souls, we're busier than God intended us to be. If you're too busy doing and carrying the loads of your school schedule, of your work schedule, and you're too busy for souls, the burden that you have for your job, for a paycheck, or for your future career is getting in the way of the burden that God wants to give you. We just heard about how that burden is attached to cities. That revelation is attached to cities. And that revelation produces a burden. You already started feeling it. But the thing about receiving a burden is that you have to learn how to preserve that burden. You can't just receive a burden and then think that everything's going to work out and that you're going to want to wake up every single day and teach a Bible study and preach the gospel every single day that you go to school. Because... Midterms are going to come. Finals are going to come. That state exam is going to come. Applying for college is going to come. Choosing a school is going to come. A job selection is going to come. That job fair is going to come. And those things, if you're not careful, are going to attach additional things to your life that will distract you from the burden that God has given you. And if you're not careful, you'll actually release back to God the burden that he's given you because you're trying to carry too many grocery bags to your house. See, you're going to have to receive this burden this week, and then you're going to have to learn how to pray back through when you're super discouraged because you're disappointed 
at what you think God was going to do in a certain moment with your natural expectations, and it didn't come through how you thought it would in your natural expectations. And you're going to have to pray back through. And when you have this frustration and this suffering comes into your family or your household, or you get disappointed with what happened with your friend, and you feel like somebody's not pulling their weight, you're going to have to pray back through again for that burden to refresh in your spirit and not get bitter at somebody else because they're not pulling their weight. See, the thing about a burden is when you have a burden for souls because of the love of God being in you, that's the root of every burden in the kingdom of God is the love of God. But that burden for souls, the cares of this life will choke that out of you. I'm talking real life right now. And it's quiet because it's real life, what I'm talking about. right? The Holy Ghost is talking about it. It will choke the life out of that burden that you're carrying. And if you associate yourselves with people that don't have a burden, that burden is going to be easy to drop. If you're not exposing yourself to people that have a burden for souls on a regular basis, you, you see, one of the reasons why I love this meeting, being in person, is that you will be exposed to people that have the same burden you do. And you're going to go back to your schools and your youth groups and your high schools, and there's not going to be the same level of focus that you're going to feel this week. And it's if you're not exposed on a regular basis to people that have the same burden, that burden is going to dwindle in your life. And you need to be diligent about preserving the channel of the love of God through a burden and for a burden for souls if you want to have longevity in this. See, it's great for you to be successful. Have one year, man, this was a great year of campus ministry. This was a great year of P7. But you think that cities get taken over in one day? It took two years. That's a short amount of time, but it didn't happen in one day. I know Paul had to stay close to his disciples because there were some days he felt more of the adversarial part of, than the open door part. If, see, okay, Lord. You spend any certain amount of time in ministry, you're going to face fatigue. And being in ministry is a load to carry. And if you're carrying a load that's not the, lo the Lord's load, that fatigue will turn into paralysis. And even if you just look around, previous CMI events or other CMIers have come across your spirit, I wonder if they're coming this week. Other P7ers, I wonder if they're coming this week. Do you know what happened to them? They took on too many burdens besides the burden of the Lord. They got distracted. They laid it down, and they're not interested anymore. And there's no longevity for them when it comes to making long-term impact for souls. The purpose of having a burden is not just, oh, I get a burden for souls. I have a good time, just like Mike said it. I post great pictures, and that's it. There's something so much more far-reaching that God is wanting to attach to your life. But preserving the burden is so important. We cannot have these every single week for the rest of your life. I mean, God knows what's going to happen in the future, but what if this is the only school of Tyrannus that you specifically get to be a part of because of where God takes you regarding his kingdom. You've got to get everything in your spirit that you can. And this week, see, the thing about carrying a burden is that 
A burden will take you further than what you naturally thought you could do. Because you don't carry this burden by yourself. The Bible says that we have a yoke that we share with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he doesn't let us lead this load. See, you got to carry this burden and don't come up with a bunch of your own ideals all of a sudden in the flesh. You've got to carry this load and still ask of him because he said, learn of me. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. See, this is a learning process. This is, you don't just feel the emotions that can attach themselves to a burden and then just go and conquer your campus. This is going to be a learning experience that you're going to have to endure in the flesh and prosper in the spirit to carry. If you, it's exciting to be a part of, uh, in my personal position, CMI and P7 is the most exciting group of ministries that you could be a part of as a child of God. But here it comes. You ready? You're going to face some real tired days along the way. And that burden is going to feel heavier some days because so-and-so didn't show up. This person's not responding to my texts. This person said they wanted to be in a Bible study and they ghosted me. The experienced CMIers right now and P7ers are like, And if you don't have a true burden for souls, you will throw in the towel. See, this is not something that can be achieved in the flesh. My wife had a dream regarding this this week. And one of the battles that our generation faces is the temptation to impress. In her dream, she saw these tunnels that many young people were traveling through, and they were doing backflips and front flips and cartwheels and all this type of gymnastic acrobatic stuff, trying to cause a show. And at the end of this tunnel, there was a parking garage that they were supposed to climb, but they were too tired to climb because they were too busy trying to impress each other on the journey. And if you're going to let the spirit of this age influence you to impress the other CMI or down the street or to impress the other P7 club across your district, you're going to wear yourself out taking upon burdens that God did not call you to carry. And so while you want to rejoice and you want to share the joy of the Lord and seeing that person be filled with the Holy Ghost or baptized in Jesus' name, I'm telling you right now in the Holy Ghost that you're going to feel the temptation to show that off. See, when we partner with God to carry a burden and God gives us holy accomplishment by his will, by his grace to do his will, It's going to be a battle of purity. It's going to be a battle of purity. See, because if you get your burden for souls perverted with elevating yourself in the eyes of others, I hope the Lord helps you to fail. Why do I say that so strong? Because the burden of the Holy Ghost is for you to do this for the glory of God and not the glory of yourself. And in the Old Testament, the prophets regarded the word of God a burden of the Lord. Because they knew that to carry God's word was to carry God's burden. And so the question you have to ask yourself is, How many burdens am I carrying that are not God's 
but they're of my own flesh. And you'll realize real quick that we tend to carry a lot more baggage than what God wants us to carry. And while the Bible says to lay aside every weight and sin, we have to really take some inventory, which is why I'm so thankful we took some time to repent at the beginning. But carrying a burden is a holy privilege to partner with God in. And this is not our burden. See, we can get the Messiah complex. God wants to change your entire campus and cities attached to your campus and countries attached to your campus. But you are not the Messiah. You are not Christ Jesus himself. He's in you the hope of glory. He's the one that's manifesting himself through you. But in your flesh, you are not the one that's originating this burden. Christ is the one that's the origin of this burden, which is why you're going to have the grace to operate in a greater dimension than you thought you ever would which is why you're going to operate in a greater operation of the gifts of the Spirit than you ever would, which is why you'll reach for more people than you thought you ever could, because this is not your burden. This is his burden. His burden will cause you to do things you didn't know you could do by, you didn't know you could do, period. But his Spirit wants to produce in you things, burdens, passions, determination, faithfulness on the campus, sowing seed, watering the seed, praying for the seed, fasting that God would submit your flesh to his will so that you could hear clearly and operate in the will of God. That is all produced from him. And so if you try to go about your campus operating in your burden, you're going to be very frustrated. And I'm, i got to say it again. I hope you don't succeed. His burden will cause you and bring you to a place where you see more things. And, I mean, God will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you and I could ask or think. I mean, where's that dimension? Right? Brother Mike talked to us about what do you see? See, we need to have this Abrahamic faith where the Bible says that when he was offering Isaac on the altar, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, says that Abraham believed that God would even raise up Isaac from the dead. That happened near the beginning of the book of Genesis. My question for you is, before that event happened, who was raised from the dead? Easy Bible trivia, nobody was. So how could Abraham believe for something that he had never seen before? That's what Brother Mike was by the Holy Ghost triggering you to see. But once you get to that dimension, God says, and I could still do more than that. Because that's the dimension where God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to what? The power that works within us. And his power, his grace will not go beyond what his burden has put on us for. And so, yes, there's hundreds of students on your campus, and God will give you the burden for all of them. But he won't. I mean, how many times have you sat in that exam and you pray for God to give you the answers? That's not part of God's agenda. His burden addresses his agenda. And so if because it's his burden... You'll never run out of grace to carry it. See, whenever you will get tired, not if you get tired, when you get tired, 
Not if you get frustrated with what's happening in campus ministry. When you get frustrated when, with what's happening in campus ministry. You can come to the Lord and pray for grace to carry his burden because his burden obligates him to provide for you the grace, the mercy, and the peace to deal with your fellow campus ministers and P7ers and to work with the souls that are on your campus. The Lord's helping you right now to not give up when that time comes. Because you will be frustrated with the people that you work with. And when other people let go of the burden that God has given them, you don't have to. You don't have to. Say that over yourself. I don't have to. I don't have to. You got to say it again. Say it with some faith. I don't have to. I don't have to. You spend enough time in ministry, and you're going to see people just back off in in carrying their load in the kingdom of God. You will see people rescind is the word. You will see people back off and say, I don't know if I want to pull my weight. See, God gives his burden or his load to different people in the kingdom of God according to how he has gifted them and how he wants to use them. And God gives grace to everyone, and we can read that in 1 Corinthians 12. But the Lord does not want us to suffer in our ability to do our part because somebody else just says, well, I mean, what are you going to do when that other individual that you thought you would partner with is too busy with their stuff? Is your burden going to be compromised from God? How many of you are the only one on your campus? You don't know of any other apostolic that's all right? Yeah. How many is just one other person? It's just two of you on campus. Yeah, right? My God, we better be forgiving of each other. Even when you have a lot of people, sometimes it gets even more frustrating because you got more personalities to deal with. But the question is, will you compromise the burden that God gave you? See, when other people's compromise theirs. I'm, I, I'm not sure if the Holy Ghost is coming to a close yet. But the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, that di- to have diverse weights and measures in our bag is an abomination unto the Lord. What in the, what in the world does that mean? That doesn't mean having nickels, pennies, dimes, and quarters in your pocket is an abomination to the Lord. Because if it was, we'd all be in trouble when we were kids. That means when you've got too many different kinds of loads and burdens in your life, that's an abomination to God. That's the same kind of language that we use when God doesn't like homosexuality. That's how strong God feels about mixing burdens of the flesh with burdens of the spirit. Because we start perverting the work and the kingdom of God with our own agenda because we want people to notice us and not God and souls to notice each other. The Holy Ghost wants to be real because the burden of the Lord is so holy. And that's not for you to be scared of bearing it. That's for you to feel privileged. The burden of the Lord is a privilege to carry. God is willing to share a yoke with us. If you would just observe how two oxen get under the same yoke, Just the two of them going about in the field, the stronger ox leading the weaker ox. God wants to help you in your weaknesses and operate in the supernatural in ways that you did not in your natural mind think you could operate. But you've got to let him put the burden in you. 
And sometimes that takes a lot of repentance and a lot of transparency and a lot of admittance to God. What I'm taking too much time with is not your will, Lord. I know there's a sigh in your spirit because let's be honest. How many times have we taken too much than what the Lord was giving us grace for? And we start wondering, well, why don't I have peace? Well, why do I feel so exhausted beyond the Lord's measure? Why am I so angry and irritable? Why does everything annoy me so much? You're probably caring more than what God wanted you to. And you don't, you don't have grace. Thanks, brother. You don't have grace working in you to bear the burden that God has given you. Because it's being, what the Bible says, frustrated in areas that he doesn't want you to use that grace for. Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. How do you frustrate the grace of God? Using what he supplied in your spirit for things that he didn't call you to operate in or to partake of. Let's lift our hands and pray right now so you can breathe. Jesus, we take in your word right now, Father, because we do not want to take in the things of this world or take upon our spirits the things that you have not called us to take on, Jesus. Father, right now, in fact, forgive me, Lord, of every occupation or business that I've taken upon myself that has not been of you, Father. Right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, forgive me if I started taking too many credit hours that you didn't want me to. Forgive me, Lord, if I'm taking too much of a shift that you don't want me to, Jesus. Father, right now in Jesus' name, Lord, set my schedule, Father, in order to do your will in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. See, we are so conditioned. We are so conditioned by our program services and conferences and meetings that we think it takes this big firework explosion. I've received a call and burden from God. And I'm going to go take over my campus. See, this burden is not for your emotion. This burden is not supposed to become attached to your soul. It's not supposed to be attached to the hype and the entertainment that we sometimes give each other in a lot of places. This burden is supposed to attach to your spirit. And the spirit is not about getting caught up emotionally. This bur See, Paul talked about the spirit, soul, and body being presented unto God and preserved blameless and holy. That's the order of priority. Spirit, soul, which is where your, the seat of your emotions is, is in your soul in your will, and then your body. This burden, because it's a spiritual burden, it attaches to your spirit, which is why you don't have to feel like talking to somebody in order to talk to them, which is why you don't have to feel like teaching a Bible study in order to teach that Bible study, 
which is why you don't have to feel like praying for that person in order to pray for that person. Which is why you don't have to feel like evangelizing on your campus in order to evangelize. Because that's all soul operation. But the burden of the Lord is a spiritual operation. And so this burden that you are receiving into your spirit is attaching itself to your spirit. So let's receive that in our spirit right now. Father, I receive the burden of the Lord in my spirit. In my spirit. Let your spirit in my spirit, Jesus, govern my soul and govern my body. Govern my thoughts, Jesus. Let me behold what you want me to behold, Jesus, and develop a desire for what you cause me to behold, Jesus. Let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ that there is a burden attached to me, Lord, for your kingdom, for your will, for your purposes, for your plans, Jesus. I receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, I want you to pray over your spirit. Pray over your spirit. Pray over your spirit. If you feel no emotion, do not be hindered by that. Pray over your spirit. Let the Holy Ghost pray through you for your spirit. You feel that? See, I can't even say that. You sense that? You sense that? The Spirit is bearing witness. Oh, yes. Keep praying. CCMIers and P7ers, if you ever learn to prioritize your spirit, in connection with God's spirit over your soul and body, everything is going to work out in the will of God. If you learn to attach things to your spirit and not to your intellect and not to your emotions and not to your body, God will do through you things you never thought he could do through you in your natural mind. If you learn to prioritize spiritual operation, over soul and body, and let the Spirit of God govern your soul and body. No circumstance, no campus is too strong. No principality is too strong. No amount of souls is too many for God to impact through your life. There's no spirit too intimidating. There's no spirit too perverted for you to conquer. If you learn about the power of prioritizing spirit over soul and body. One more prayer. Be intentional. Lord, let the spirit govern my spirit. Let it govern my soul and let it govern my body. Right now, Jesus, in that order, Father, let your spirit govern my spirit to govern my soul, to govern my body. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Preserve the burden. Preserve the burden. We're going to have deeper moves of God this week. But to preserve that, you must let it abide in your spirit. This is the last thing I'm going to say. When things get attached to your spirit, they don't have to make sense to your brain. When the burden of the Lord attaches to your spirit, it doesn't have to make sense to your intellect. You can just speak according to the burden 
and the miracle will happen. And miracles are supposed to be unexplainable. And so your brain won't get in the way. If it attaches to your spirit, the natural can't have a blockade to set up against what the burden of the Lord has put upon you. Praise God. Let's continue to receive that in the spirit of God. you to stay in the spirit of prayer. I'll tell you what I feel. I when I was sitting over there, the Lord gave me a vision that you guys take my step to this altar, but don't go your own way. I'll tell you what I feel. And as soon as I bounced it off of Hector, I started to feel literally it might sound crazy, but my feet started feeling tingly. And when that happens sometimes that it's my hands and my feet, I know it's the Lord confirming that there's something that's going to happen when you take that step. I'll tell you what I feel in the Holy Ghost. I feel that if you want to take another step to seal the burden of the Lord in your spirit, that by you subjecting your body, soul, and spirit to God and submitting that by stepping up here and lifting up your hands, that that act of faith is going to con- then begin to seal the burden in your spirit. And God's just going to continue to lay that upon you. And you're going to begin to sense, as he said, not feel in your emotions, but in your spirit. You're going to feel God continuing to open the capacity to receive that burden so that you can continue to receive this week. And if you feel like the Lord is doing with you that, I want you just to come up front here and take a step of faith. Lift your hands towards heaven and let God seal. Come all the way up to the front. That's okay. You can come up all the way to the front. I want you, by you doing that, by you making that step of faith, and you lift your hands towards heaven, we don't need music, we just need the Holy Ghost. You make that step of faith, God is going to rest that burden upon your, that's it, that's feel it right now. God is sealing it right now. God is sealing it right now. You don't need anyone to lay hands on you. You just need the Holy Ghost and the burden of the Lord by te- taking the step of faith. And God will seal the burden of the Lord. That's it. Come on. Let the Lord seal the burden. Let the Lord seal the burden in your spirit. We're not looking for an emotion. We're letting out our voice. We're opening our spirit to receive the burden. Come on, let the Lord seal it. Let the Lord seal it. Let the Lord seal the burden in your spirit. My voice is shot. Do you mind just praying? Italaba sianda yero boko sianda baha. Ete hatamayo sianda hale siaka tore na monda. I daramando rehete si ando ho kosi ataya. Hete o si anda ha. Etaba si ando ho satahaya. Come on, receive, 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 receive. Hatashi ele oti a singa da boshi e ele eti anda ata heredes. Ah, Rine, Osuna, Eli Hataya, Raboko Shana. Io Tode, Elia Kandusa, Molena Hiatai. Yes, receive it into your spirit. Aganesh, Ila Lobosia, Tayere Namondaha. Una Rihitia, Restena Ole Tebakoi. Yes, receive it into your spirit. If your emotions respond, let them respond. But don't let it originate from your emotions. 
Let it originate from the Spirit. Come on. Let your body be under the governance of the Spirit. This is the spiritual ministry. This is why you need a spiritual burden. This is a spiritual calling and a spiritual operation. Which is why you need a spiritual burden. This is a supernatural operation. Which is why you need a supernatural burden. Yes, and the Holy Ghost. Let and the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost. Receive the burden. Receive the burden. Tell the Lord, Lord, preserve this burden in my spirit. Preserve this burden in my spirit. God, preserve this burden against every attack of the adversary. Preserve this burden against every attack of the flesh. Preserve this burden, God. Jesus, I commit to preserve this burden. I commit to preserve this burden. Come on, there's no circumstance that's going to take the burden for your campus. There's no challenge, there's no struggle that's going to take the burden for those souls. There's no class that's going to distract me enough from stopping me to reach those souls. There is nothing that's going to get in my way because this burden is not a burden of the flesh. It's a burden of the spirit. There's no job that's going to get in my way. There's no relationship or friendship that's going to get in my way because this burden is not a burden of the flesh, but of the spirit. Hitamo Oshia Ndahaye. Come on, pray the love of God. Pray the love of God into your spirit. Pray the love of God into your spirit because the love of God, it's patient, it's kind, it's long-suffering. It does not boast of itself. It's not, it does not puff itself up. This is all connected to God's burden. The burden of the Lord will sustain when man does not sustain. The burden of the Lord will go longer and go beyond when man gets too weary and man gets fatigued. When organizations and structures fail, God's burden for souls and his love does not fail. Love believes all things and endures all things. Love hopes all things and believes all things. This is the burden of the Lord. One originated from the love of God. Love will make you do things that the flesh is uncomfortable with doing. 
but a love for souls will take you outside of your comfort zone. A love for souls will cause you to stop in the middle of your homework assignment. Send a text to that soul who's reaching for God. A love and a burden for souls will cause you to wake up in the middle of the night and intercede for your campus. A love for souls will cause you to make time for that Bible study. A burden for souls will cause you to say no to that hanging out and go teach a Bible study. A burden for souls will cause you to stop your own agenda and reach the lost. Right now, by the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus, I loose the love of God to come from outside of the Holy Ghost in you to cause you to do and reach the lost and do the will of God. I loose the love of God to cause you to change in your character and go beyond what you thought you could do. I loose the love of God to cause you to intercede for souls like you've never interceded before. The love of God, a love for God, a love, the love of God, the love of God, the love of God. Not human love, God's love, God's love. When you don't feel powerful, the love of God will cause you to act. When you don't feel capable, the love of God will cause you to act. You got to learn how to pray in your prayer closet for a love of God, for the love of God. You got to learn how to pray for the love of God to take over your spirit, to take over your soul, and to take over your body so that you can act on the prayers that you pray when nobody's listening. But God is listening. The love of God. No greater love has man than this, to lay down his life for his friends. Jesus was giving us an example that he laid down his will for others to find salvation. The love of God will cause you to lay down your desires, lay down your plans, lay down your agenda so somebody can hear the message of salvation. The love of God never fails. When man fails... The love of God will cause you to succeed. Love will preserve your burden for souls. The love of God.
All right, you ready for this? Keep praying, keep praying. If you're going to love souls how God loves souls, you need to learn how to receive that love for yourself. You need to lo learn how to love yourself in the love of God to properly be able to more effectively love souls how God wants to love souls through your life. As you minister to souls in the love of God, God's going to heal you of the lacking that you've had in your spirit because people lacked to love you. If I have all knowledge and all wisdom but have no love, it doesn't matter. If I give my life, lay it down for the gospel and have no love, it doesn't matter. If I speak in tongues and prophesy all the time but don't have love working in me, it doesn't matter. Love will renew and preserve the burden for souls and the operation of supernatural ministry in your life. The greatest of these is love. Love will produce the burden that God wants in your life. A love for souls. A love for souls. Uh, come on, do you love that soul enough to send them a text message between classes? Do you love that soul that God is reaching for? Do you love them enough to make time, discipline yourself, do your homework so that you can go teach the Bible study? Do you have the love of God working in you enough to discipline yourself so that you can effectively be available for campus ministry in P7? The love of God affects everything. Yes. I'll tell you what I just saw the Lord do right now. The Lord just smiled. And I'll tell you why he smiled. Because the Lord loves to work with somebody who has the same attitude that he does. It's hard to work with somebody that has, that has a bad attitude. It's hard to work in the same mission when somebody has a poor attitude. But you just took upon the, the, the yoke of the Lord, and now you have his heart. 
And when he saw your heart be a reflection of his heart, he smiled and said, now we can plow. Let's thank the Lord for what he's done tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for your word and spirit. We rejoice, God. We rejoice, Lord. We rejoice in the pleasure of the Lord. We rejoice in the pleasure of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. You know, it's really awesome when God's in a good mood. I love it when my dad was in a good mood when I was little because I could just about ask for anything and he'd give it to me. Your response, your obedience, just put God in a good mood for this week. Let's see what the Lord is going to do for the rest of the week. I think we're good. Praise God. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Be safe tonight. Let the Lord preserve the burden. Brother Mike's coming. I'll mention a few things.